Good morning, I'm Roy Williams, and I'm the President and CEO of the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber, and thank all of you for joining us today for what will be an in-depth discussion about Oklahoma's approach to economic development. Uh, personally, I hope we walk away today from this event with a better understanding of how our state hopes to improve our business environment and how business leaders can support those initiatives. But first, I'd like to recognize the generous support of our signature sponsor, Cox Business. Please help me welcome Devin Maynard, Sales Manager with Cox Business Security Solutions. I appreciate you having us here. Uh, like uh, Roy had mentioned, my name is Devin Maynard. I'm the sales manager for Cox Business Security Solutions. And on our behalf it, uh, with Cox Business, we are honored to be the signature sponsor for this event. Um, not only, I know most of you recognize Cox Business, but not only do we provide great services for phone and internet needs, we also now offer security solutions for that helps business owners with protecting their business and also with uh, profitability and productivity. Uh, one of the things that you can do is with us is we, we, we like to come out, share our, our solutions with uh, each business owner and the, their business and offer that solution to better fit the needs of their business. Um, again, we have a great team. I'm glad that some of them are here to help uh, be a part of this uh, event. But I, I know you don't wanna hear a lot about me and our business, you wanna eat, so I'm not gonna spend much more time up here, but I am excited to learn more about the uh, economic developments and the plans and the opportunities that Cox Business and ourselves can help uh, with a future success on that. So again, I hope you enjoy your lunch and al along with our uh, panel and the topic today. Thank you. Thank you, Devin. I'm also pleased to recognize our corporate sponsor, ADG. Thank you all for uh, being sponsors. Um, when Governor Stitt was elected to lead the state of Oklahoma, he made his vision for the state very clear to all of us, and that was he wants Oklahoma to be a top 10 state. This is especially true for expanding Oklahoma's economic prosperity, which was one of his major campaign issues. Earlier this year, Governor Stitt named two people who will be responsible for much of the day-to-day -day approach to economic development, and we're excited to have both of them here today to talk about how the state's approach to economic development is changing, what this administration's immediate priorities are, and also how we can measure if our state is successfully adapting its approach to recruiting and retaining businesses. We're also gonna discuss how those of us in this room as chamber members and also business leaders can support their work to make the overall state successful. But before we get into that discussion, please enjoy your lunch and I'll be back shortly to introduce our panelists. Thank you again. Well, today, as I said earlier, we're fortunate to hear from two people at the helm of our state's economic development program. Their extensive bios are in your program, so please help me welcome Sean Copeland, the Oklahoma Secretary of Commerce and Workforce Development, and Brent Kissling, Executive Director, Oklahoma Department of Commerce. Thank you both for being here. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Y'all mic'd up? Yes, sir. Testing, testing, yes. We're yes, on. can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, good. Okay, probably a lot of the people in the audience don't know you too. That's, uh, that's right. Fortunately, I do. Very likely. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your background, sort of introduce yourself, you know, and kind of why you decided to take these positions. Okay. So I'm Sean Copeland. I am a, I'm a private business person. Uh, my wife and I own a number of operating companies. I'm a banker um, in real life. Um, we have a community bank called Regent Bank, and uh, that's what I was doing. Uh, I have been, had been uh, friends with the governor for probably about 15 years. We started our companies about the same time. Uh, we both survived 2008 and 2009 at the same time. And about a month before 
uh, the general election. I was driving around. I was actually here in Oklahoma City at our office, and I got a call, and he asked if I would uh, serve on his transition team. I said, what does that mean? What do, you, what do you do on a transition team? And he said, oh, don't worry. He said, it's very ceremonial. Uh, we have staff that will take care of all of that, and uh, we just need three people to oversee our uh, transition. And I said, well, if it's, if it's high profile and not much work, I'm in. Sure. <laughs> So he named three of us to the transition team, and it ended up being about 60 to 70 hours a week. We were uh, looking for cabinet uh, secretaries. We were helping with this platform. We were helping to plan inaugural balls. I mean, it was very extensive. And toward the end of our time together, um, I was uh, looking for Secretary of Commerce candidates and found great ones. And he interviewed him, and he, and he, we'll talk about this more later, but he looks for a very particular type of uh, person. And when it was all said and done, he kind of flipped it around and, and pulled a Dick Cheney moment on me and asked if I would be interested in uh, being Secretary of Commerce. I said, no, he's very persuasive, so here I am. <laughs> so <clears throat> we had to work out a dynamic where I could continue uh, to run our uh, banking organization. We have 200 shareholders that would hunt me down uh, if I left that, that uh, role. And so my main job has been to hire the guy uh, to my right. And he's amazing, and I'll let him Take it from here. Brett? Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I am amazing. Thank you for that uh, introduction. <laughs> um, I have, uh, I have actually. Just to compliment me back. <laughs> yes. Is the way that's supposed to. Oh, I had that backwards. This is I, our whole relationship, everybody. John Copeland and I have been friends since college. Uh, we went to Oklahoma State together. Uh, he was an AGR. I was farmhouse. Actually, Kevin Stitt was beta while we were there. We, I didn't know him. I don't know whether you uh, knew him very well then. Uh, the governor was making money. He had already started a company. We were still spending mom and dad's money, so uh, we, we didn't get to know him as well. But I have known Sean for a very long time. He is an amazing guy, and, and uh, we really do have a lot of fun working together for economic growth. Uh, one thing he didn't mention is he has a, a great heart also, and every morning at 817, he does a, 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 a call-in Bible study that has 30,000 people that call in as part of this every morning from 817 to 830 something like that I've called in a couple of times just to make sure he's not talking about me and it's a it's a great thing that he does um, I grew up on a farm and ranch in, in Burlington Oklahoma uh, there's probably ten times as many people in this room right now as what lived in the town that I grew up in I've uh, absolutely loved being a small town boy but I uh, um, I, I went off to Oklahoma State University I, I worked for US Senator Jim Inhofe for a while I uh, got to serve the Bush administration as the head of USDA Rural Development. It's really at that point that I, I kind of started understanding how economic development happens across the state and how it happens different in Oklahoma City as to Burlington and Enid and uh, Paul's Valley. Um, it, it fascinates me the way different communities can grow. And then uh, uh, after working at USDA Rural Development for a while, I, uh, uh, I went home. My kids were starting to be in high school. And so I became the Economic Development Director in Enid, and I've been doing that for the last 10 years. There's a ton of folks here in this room today that I've been able to work with the last, uh, last 10 years in that role. And then felt very fortunate to join the, the STIT team here the last three months and uh, to be a part of that energy and that excitement and, and uh, work there at the, as Executive Director of Commerce. Good. Thank you. Thank both of you. Um, so, as is obvious, both of you are new to your roles. You didn't come from another job like this and take this job. So, share with us a little bit about what the kind of the aha moments were when you stepped into your new role, good or bad. What what just went? Oh my gosh! I'll uh, I'll go first on that. I I think the biggest aha moment for me so far has been uh, has been really more about Governor Stitt than it has been about the office. I've been fascinated with the, the 92 employees that work at the Department of Commerce, how professional they are, uh, the fact that there are there's no employment issues there. Everybody is self motivated. Uh, the, we just need a direction, and, and uh, I think we're certainly getting there. Am I cutting out on you? Um, but I think the biggest aha moment for me so far has been watching the interaction of Governor Stitt and some of the companies that we have brought to him. Uh, we had a, a company at the mansion, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, and I, I think Sean might have been there also, 
but uh, we had the CEO of this company sitting there around the table and some of his leadership team and some of our partners from around the state were there. And we had a gap in our utility needs to finish this deal out. And they were gonna invest hundreds of millions of dollars in our state, there's about an $8 million gap. And everybody's going around the table talking about the different grants that they could apply for or the different uh, public funds that we could apply for. And I don't know whether you remember this, but about halfway through the conversation, he turns to the CEO and says, what else are you gonna put in this? And, uh, and he said, well, we're investing hundreds of millions. And he said, well, you, uh, you, probably, you probably should have known up front that this expense was gonna be here. It was an oversight on your part. What are you gonna put in? By the end of the conversation, there was an extra $1.5 million on the table from the company that wasn't there at the beginning. To me, that, that, I love that. As a citizen of Oklahoma and somebody involved in economic growth, only a CEO can talk to another CEO like that, and, and um, that's been interesting to me. You know, my two uh, ahas would be, number one, the quality of the people uh, that we work with. I had, a, I had a perception of a state government employee that maybe some of you have, and uh, my perception is not accurate. I mean, these are smart people. They work very hard. They work below market uh, for pay uh, because they're very passionate about what they do, and so uh, that has frankly been a shocker to me. Uh, the other uh, thing that has been surprising to me is how quickly uh, you can make an impact. The other thing that I thought was, well, it's bureaucracy, and it is, you know, you always hear, well, you just can't do anything in government because you blah, 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 blah variety of reasons. And uh, my experience is that that is not true. Um, we have, I think, we'll talk about it, but I think we've made significant strides quickly uh, in many areas uh, of the government, and I think you can. You can run uh, government to a very large degree like a business, and that is what we've been doing. Um, and and uh, the agencies, uh, I have 42 agencies that I, am, uh, that I oversee, and they love that, and they, um, they're all energized, and so I think that's been the two for me. Terrific. Thank you. So in your new job now, and you understanding more and more of the roles and stuff, what, what do you all both see as really your immediate priorities when you, when you go back to work? What's, what's front and center to you? Mine is primarily to tell Brent what to do. That's what I <laughs> and make mine sure. Mine is to listen and do exactly make sure that he shows up and that you know <laughs> we're actually him to do it. right and then actually get it. No, so uh, uh, another big shocker, which I could have included in the last answer, which is uh, uh, to me has to be one of our top priorities is workforce development. Um, I did not realize. I thought so. So back when we were going through the transition, we had seven. Uh, uh, transition teams that focused on areas from, we, uh, Lieutenant Governor Pinnell and I headed an economic growth one, and there was health care, there was criminal justice, there was a variety of groups, and I thought we gathered people all over the state for the economic growth meeting, and I thought what we would hear is we can't compete because we don't have enough, we don't have a big enough closing fund, or we don't have enough incentives, or we don't have, you know, we're too small, or here's all the reasons, we need more money, was what I expected to come out of that meeting. And what came out of that meeting, and Brent was in there, was um, it's all about workforce. And so what has happened is when we go to Washington, D.C. to pitch uh, a new potential Oklahoma City company with this uh, contingent, what do they say? It's all about workforce. When we sit with aerospace leaders uh, like Michael at the governor's mansion, and we say, what do you need? He says, it's all about workforce. I mean, it is just, it's recurring over and over. So I think, to, to me, uh, that's, that's number one. And, and that, thankfully, in, in the restructuring of the cabinet roles, uh, my title is uh, Secretary of Commerce and Workforce Development uh, for that reason, because the two are so intertwined together. Um, and then the other, uh, I think, priority is focusing on our existing businesses. Uh, we are, uh, we are gonna recruit outside. We have a top five anti-business list uh, throughout the country that we're gonna do guerrilla marketing into and try to steal companies and bring them in. And we, we wanna do that and I love that. But in reality, there are so <clears throat> many companies, and I know Brent's had this experience too, that I visit with on a day-to-day -day basis that have never heard a word from the state of Oklahoma. 
Never, unless it was because their taxes were due or their, their you know, corporate uh, certificate was lapsed or something like that. I mean, there hasn't ever, there just hasn't been this effort toward, hey, you're adding jobs, you're adding value, you're, how can we help you? Let us tell you about the resources we have, and we have many. Um, so I think those are the top two for me. Well, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is actually the first time that the Secretary and I have been on the stage together. Uh, in the I'm nervous. Yeah. I'm very nervous. <laughs> he was talking about priorities. I'm like, yeah, okay, I better write those down. Um, we, I completely agree with everything the Secretary says, obviously. But, uh, uh, but some other priorities that we have. First of all, we've got to make sure the thunder went on Friday night. I wore the colors today. <laughs> we have uh, got to keep, keep, uh, keep hope alive, I'm sure, for a win once we get them back home. But I also saw my dear friend Russ Florence over here a while ago, and it made me think that one of our, or maybe our top priority right now is we have got to have a brand as a state. Those of you who own businesses or are involved in any types of sales of products, you have got to know what your product is before you can ever sell it. Before you can send staff out on the road and start telling them to move their company to Oklahoma or, or even to invest in our state, you've got to have a message first. And, and we've been through several iterations of that as a state uh, through PR and marketing. We've had taglines. Uh, we've had logos. Uh, we've had all of that over the years. But I don't know that we've ever really stepped back and said, what is our promise to the rest of the world? What is our brand promise? And, and there's a lot of different directions we could go with that. Uh, because there's, there's the direction of, well, we're, we're lower cost than everybody else. You can make 100 grand here, and it's just like making $250,000 in Orange County. Or you can say, uh, you know, we drive 10 miles and it's 10 minutes in Oklahoma, and that's much different than Dallas. And that's a great, great message to share. We're, we're quaint. We're, we're uh, an oil and gas state, we're, uh, uh, we're an Air Force base state, or a military state, we're an agrarian state, we're a high energy state, we're an aggressive state. There, there's lots of different directions we can go, and I'm, I wouldn't want to taint the process by saying exactly what I'm thinking, but I think in, in Governor Stitt's wisdom, he appointed a secretary of branding. And I don't know that we've ever had one of those in Oklahoma before, some of you have been around a, a while can probably tell us. Uh, but Lieutenant Governor Pinnell is the Secretary of Tourism and Branding. And that process has begun uh, of assembling some of the thought leaders here within the, uh, uh, within the state. Many of you in this room are going to be involved in this organization, will for sure be involved uh, to provide input uh, for what that brand is. But over, this, uh, over the next eight, nine months, um, we're, going to be, uh, we're going to be discussing branding. And, and to me, that's... That's going to be important for us because we've got, we've got 92 people at Commerce that we send all around the world. What am I telling them to say? Right now I'm just saying, hey, say nice things about Brent and Sean and, and you know, do your best. Uh, they need a better message than that, and, and we're working on it. That is not actually what we tell them to say, <laughs> just in case you're, oh, in we case you're very nervous about our sales process. We have it's pamphlets. Uh, much better than that. Uh, yeah. As you can tell, pride is not an issue we have up here. <laughs> oh. Well, y'all have kind of touched on this question, but, but I want to get into it a little bit deeper. What, what else is going to change about the state's approach to economic development? Because obviously the governor has said, we want to be a top 10 state. So what, you, you've talked about some of the things, but what other things do y'all think really need to change into how Oklahoma does economic development? Well, and I'll, I'll jump in first, um, because I think there's two things, and hopefully I'm stealing your two things, and then you got to really think. Um, one thing that we have got to do, and the Secretary mentioned it earlier, is focusing on our existing businesses. We always called them and named it our legacy companies. Uh, those like Devon Energy that are here, those uh, like Boeing that are, that are here today. Um, I mean, it's great to bring new companies in, and, and uh, we love to have those employers come in here. But if we're truly going to be a top 10 state, we have got to grow all of our existing businesses. And, uh, uh, we have actually already begun the process of changing some job descriptions at the Department of Commerce, especially with our field staff. We have uh, six staff members that are all around the state um, that used to work projects for us. I know Christy is back here. She used to be one of those uh, uh, a couple of years ago. Um, we were, uh, were 
we're wanting them to not get stuck on specific projects, but instead do what the secretary was saying, go out and visit each one of these companies, find out what their needs are, what are some of those barriers, and be able to have a, a direct line back to us, back to the governor, in order to solve some of those problems. That's one. Uh, but another big one is more of a cultural change, I think, for state government and, uh, and also for the Department of Commerce. And it is this idea that the Department of Commerce does not create any jobs. We don't create, just state government doesn't create jobs. We create an environment where businesses can add jobs. That's our goal. And, and if, uh, if you can change the culture to that, then you realize that you truly are, as an organization, a support, a service organization that's there to help Brad Cooksey and Lawton and, and Roy here in Oklahoma City and, and, and making sure that, that they have all of the tools that they need to grow their local community. Uh, if, if any of our staff in the Department of Commerce ever stands up and say, we created 3,000 jobs last year and they make $68,000 a year, please let me know about it because we don't want to take credit for the capital that you guys are putting at risk. So those are some basic changes we're making. Those were my top two. So <laughs> I am, uh, but I would only add to that that uh, from a business perspective, so in a, in a business like all of you are in, you have a finite amount of resources and you have to deploy those in the best way possible. You can't, you can't spend the money and then go to the legislature and ask for more. That is not an option in business. And so I would just add that to that by saying we're trying to be very, very um, strategic in how we use our marketing dollars. And so in particular, um, I mentioned the five um, anti business uh, markets that we are going after and I'll I'll just tell you they are um, California New York Washington Colorado and Michigan and we studied these extensively we laid them all out we looked at where we're the best we looked at where they are the worst and so we will and our and our goal is just to create leads for the local communities to land deals um, that's that's our purpose but then in addition we have a we have a theory that instead of just being general um, marketers, uh, and this is, a, this is applied to uh, my company as well, instead of just kind of going out there and saying, hey everybody, we want you to come to Oklahoma, we will be more successful if we pick certain industries and focus in those and become experts in aerospace, for example. Our ACES group has really proven that when you are very deliberate and focused on a particular industry, you, you infiltrate it. You're at all the conferences. You get to know everybody. You learn the, the uh, information and, and who's moving and who's growing. That's our goal in a variety of, of uh, industries and kind of our key industries. And we're just beginning this process, but that's gonna be a different way uh, that I think will we'll function than in the past. Good, thank you. Um, as you said, y'all have done a lot of uh, research, competitive research, uh, and in your in the time of your new jobs, y'all have been able to get in front of corporate CEOs that are thinking about Oklahoma as being a site, <clears throat> both domestically and internationally. So, what's been your experience in really kind of understanding what our competitive advantages and disadvantages are as we try to recruit? I hear you. Thank you. Go ahead. So um, this is the master to my left. Uh, we have, uh, Roy has been our advisor, so I'm going to answer this and then I'm gonna look at Roy and see if it's the right answer that I, that I uh, say. So Oklahoma, another shocker to me is we can compete. We can compete. This deal of 47th or 46th or whatever, it is not, um, that is not what I am finding. When we talk to companies that are looking at a variety, I mean, and, and uh, Roy was there, so he knows the company I'm talking about. I mean, we we've, have a major company that it was, there were 32 markets, then 16, then eight, then four, then two, and then we're waiting on the announcement. But we were in the final two. And the reason that we were in the final two is because there's a lot of great things about Oklahoma. Our location uh, is fantastic. The work ethic of our people is fantastic. The low cost of doing business is fantastic. The fact that we do not have a ton of um, difficult regulations that we place our businesses under is fantastic. Uh, you know, there are just, there are so many 
uh, things that we can do. The, the, the challenge, and Brent hit on it earlier, is simply as a state, I, th I think the city has done an excellent job of branding itself, but as a state, uh, we just have not. I mean, when, when you can get in front of people and tell the story or bring them here, one of my personal goals is to bring 100 uh, out-of-state regional company CEOs to Oklahoma this year, <clears throat> this calendar year, and we're working on uh, cool experiences for them because we think that when you come here, you go, man, they do have tall buildings in Oklahoma. You know, they do have cars and they do have, uh, it's not just, <laughs> not just cows and, and uh, oil wells. I mean, there is a sophistication uh, to this place. And, and we believe that when we do that, we can, we can sell. And I think if this branding is as successful as we hope, we can let the world know this, this is a great state. So. Yeah, and I'll, I'll jump on what, uh, what Sean was just saying. I, I was helping my daughter the other night with um, homework. She's a senior in high school. And so I'm not much help uh, at that level, but she was, she was uh, studying history, American history, and something jumped out of the page at me. Do you know what the population of the United States was in 1776 with 13 colonies, whenever we declared our independence from, from England? Populate, the entire population of the United States was $2.5 million, $2.5 million, $2 million people at that point. 2.5 million people in these United States in 1776. Out of that 2.5 million people came George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, Benjamin Franklin, all these folks that we hear about our entire childhood, monuments built to them, came out of 2.5 million people. We're 3.9 million here in Oklahoma, and, and what uh, the Secretary was just talking about, that sometimes we consider ourselves small and we just can't compete. We changed the world with 2.5 million people um, several hundred years ago. Um, I, I, think, uh, I think we can make a bigger impact than what we really think we can today. And, and just to get a little bit more specific, maybe on Roy's question, I see Commissioner Murphy over here with the Corporation Commission. Uh, our number one incentive that we have in Oklahoma is inexpensive electricity and utilities. That, that is the best thing that we have to spell, sell, especially if you're trying to bring in manufacturing. Or, uh, we, ought to have, we ought to have dozens of data centers like, like Google over in Pryor. We ought to have a lot of those here in, in Oklahoma. Uh, to me, that's our number one selling point that we have. Um, but you'd also asked about things that might be a detriment to us. And, uh, and either the real or perceived idea that uh, somebody's going to open up shop and not get any resumes here, the workforce thing that the secretary was talking about, uh, that, is, that is a big hurdle for us to overcome. Uh, I don't know that we can just overcome that with marketing. Um, you know, we, we really do have to have a better plan for uh, how we get folks ready to have a good resume and then also getting those resumes in Steve's hand at Boeing uh, whenever they're adding more people. That, that's a challenge for us and hopefully over the next couple of years we can come up with some solutions. Good, thank you. Um, Y'all are both highly motivated, uh, highly energetic. You strive for success. So during your tenure there, how, how do you define success for each of you? What, what will we see or what will you see that you say, I've been successful at this job? Well, if I don't get fired, I consider that pretty good every day. I actually just got uh, Senate, we both got Senate confirmed. Uh, unanimously. Unanimously. Everybody. Yes. Was that yesterday? Yes. Yeah, that was, thank you. So whoever, now, now whoever started done. that applause, I really appreciate it. I don't know. That was Clayton. Dana, Dana, that was Clayton. I mean, we really appreciate that. Though. You had to really work that one, too. Um, no, it, this is a question that uh, the Secretary and I have talked about quite a little bit because, like I'd mentioned before, I don't like taking credit for jobs that are created by people that actually put capital at risk in order to create jobs. So the Department of Commerce, um, we won't really be saying we consider it successful because we added thousands of jobs and, and, uh, and all of this investment. Um, but I do think you can look at some of the macro things that are going on in the state and hopefully continue to move the needle, to use the governor's term that he uses uh, three 50, or four times. 50,000 times a day. <laughs> yes. 50, move 000. the needle, truly move the needle in Oklahoma. Um, we're, uh, we have a wonderful research and data analytics department at the Department of Commerce. They are absolutely spectacular. If you've not worked with them before, if you're 
needing research for your company, for uh, anything here within the community. Um, and they are the only economics division that we have in state government. So they contract with the Department of Transportation. Whenever you're doing an economic impact study for a new road that's being built, uh, they contract with the Department of Commerce. The opioid settlement that we just had the other day, that was a contract between Commerce and, and the Attorney General's office in order to come up with those projected numbers. And, uh, and so them analyzing the economy and, and uh, us trying to figure out, okay, where, where are we on rig counts? How's our, uh, uh, you know, how's the vacillations in, in our commodity markets going to affect us here over the next several months? Getting a better grip on that so that we're prepared. Um, I, I think, in my mind, that's, that's part of our success. You know, I would agree with that. And to me, if we get to the end of either of our terms, whatever, whether it's two, four, eight years, and, um, and you look at it and go, okay, we, we have a, a better brand, we have better relationships between our uh, department and economic development teams all over the state of Oklahoma. And we have changed our image both in, inside and outside. And we've talked about outside uh, through the branding, but inside, uh, one of our efforts is to begin telling success stories about, about uh, businesses in our state. One of the unfortunate things is, you know, there, there's this perception that to be really successful, you've got to go to Silicon Valley or Austin or Dallas or somewhere, you know, East Coast. I mean, you can't, and that is not the case either. I mean, we hear of remarkable stories every day of obviously huge companies that have been successful, but also people that have started with nothing and have created tremendous success in the state. I mean, I, you know, I grew up on a farm in Beggs, Oklahoma, and um, have been fortunate and very blessed to buy many companies and own a bank, and I mean, and all of that happened in Oklahoma, right here in this state. And so I think, I think one of my personal goals is just to change that image. Again, this city has done that, and largely due to the, the leadership of the chamber, um, we need that to go all over the state of Oklahoma. Can I jump in on that too? Sure. You mentioned the success stories and, and uh, uh, we are trying to gather success stories right now. Uh, the governor challenged us to uh, come up with a certain number every week and we started just thinking about companies. So if your company is adding 100 employees or 50 employees, uh, we're trying to capture those. We just hired a new uh, uh, social media director that started yesterday. She is absolutely spectacular. Um, to help us get some of those stories out. But we actually have a link now on the okcommerce.gov site right on the home page as soon as you get there. It is an easy process to go through. And if, if there are success stories around your circle of influence, folks that you know, companies that are growing, it, like I said, we started with companies, but now we're also seeing, okay, there's some community projects that are incredible and uh, some local uh, arts projects that are just amazing too. And so we're, we're trying to amplify those. but. Uh, okcommerce.gov. If you'll go there, it's a very simple process. It takes you 92 seconds to fill it out. Uh, we've timed it, so please do that. Nonprofits as well. Amazing, yes, oh yeah, amazing stories of nonprofits. Good, thank you. So, kind of changing the subject a little bit. Um, we all know that over the last number of years, the state budget situation uh, was not very pretty. Uh, it's beginning to improve a little bit. So. Share with us what you all think uh, is in the cards with regard to the Commerce Department budget, especially as it might relate to expanding marketing. Uh, will we see an effort to see some growth within the Commerce budget? You want me to jump on this one first? Sure. Um, this year the governor has made it very clear that uh, he wants to try to keep all budgets level uh, just because there is a lot of um, uh, uh, uncertainty in where we're heading as far as our, our economy for this year and a lot of it has to do because we are a very commodity based economy and and uh, with vacillations and uh, especially oil and gas prices uh, want to make sure we don't outrun our punt coverage um, and and it's fascinating to hear the governor talk about budgeting because he talks about it like a guy they used to run gateway mortgage instead of somebody that's in government because normally if you get uh, an extra 600 million dollars in money, you're trying to figure out how do you spend all of that, and his approach has been, you know, let's look at incremental growth. Maybe it, uh, we know expenses are going to go up, 
So let's say our total expenses are going to go up 2%, 2.5%, whatever, uh, you know, some, some denomination of inflation um, is what we're looking at. And that way, once we do get to a point where prices go down, price of oil goes to $25, uh, we're not scrambling to cut budgets and, and, uh, uh, and, and have teacher walkouts and that kind of thing. So that's, that's a 35,000 foot level of, of the governor's approach on budgeting. For us personally at Commerce, uh, he has said a number of times that if something was going to go up, Commerce and marketing is, is where he would like to invest. Uh, the challenge will be for us to make sure that we have a very detailed marketing budget. We are not going to ask for money unless we know exactly where those dollars are going to go. And, and Sean had mentioned it earlier, we, we have a program at Commerce called ACES that many of you may not be familiar with. It stands for uh, Aerospace Commerce Economic uh, Services. Yeah. I've been, I've been <laughs> I was practicing. hoping you knew. because yeah. I, 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 I can't I, remember. I, I might have just made it up, but it's something like that. <laughs> it has the word aerospace in it, I know that. <laughs> Uh, but it, it's a fascinating approach because uh, we've, had, we've had two major successes in the last 10 years, I would say, in Oklahoma. One has been wind energy. We went from basically zero to second in the nation in wind energy production. And aerospace is another one in the last 10 years. where We, we had aerospace here, but it wasn't our second largest employer in the state. I think both of those happened because we created an environment, again, where that growth could happen. There were incentives in place on both sides of it. We had staff in place at the Department of Commerce that focused on it. Now the incentives and the people have gone away on wind. We still have uh, ACEs in place. But it gave us a model for us to go to the legislature and say, okay, what's our next industry? Is it, uh, is it medical research? Is it automobile parts manufacturing? Is it value-added agriculture? What, what is that next thing? And let's, let's put some resources into that and go forth and prosper. That's where I see the, any addition coming as well, is in these specific focused um, efforts that we would do. Uh, we did get $5 million more in, our, uh, in the closing fund, uh, which was nice. Um, and that is very helpful when it gets down to the very end and it's just you and someone else. And uh, as Roy very well knows, it's very nice to have, uh, you know, a little something there to help uh, uh, close, but we, we really, again, when you go back to business, um, it's, it's kind of against my nature to go ask for um, handouts of money. I, I would rather, uh, you know, prove ourselves, show what we can do, you know, and then if there is a legitimate investment where we can turn it into an ROI uh, for the state of Oklahoma, then we'll go ask for a specific allocation. Good. So, last question before we open it up to all of you and be thinking about any questions you might oh, have. Oh, wait, we're going to let them ask questions? Yeah. <laughs> I, <didn't, laughs> I was I in the fine print. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh -oh. and, and I'll divert the ones to the right people, too. <laughs> yeah. So, think about good ones. Um, so, what can we, the collective we, the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber, our roughly 4,000 corporate members, what can we do to help you guys be successful? I have a couple, uh, and that is, uh, and I'll, I'll speak from a commerce perspective and tourism, obviously um, I, ideas. We, I, I did not realize, you know, you always think, well, there is some kind of uh, brain trust that has all the answers, and you'd go ask those people, and they, and in reality, we are looking for the best ideas. And so if you have a, a branding thought, or if you have a marketing idea, uh, all our information's on the Commerce website. You, our emails are there, and you can email us directly. Um, so we love ideas. Uh, two is help us with economic development. So how do you do that? One, if you go to a conference somewhere, that conference ought to be here. So let us know, and let us go call on those folks, or, or your local uh, chamber call on those folks, and try to bring that uh, business here. Um, if you have, if you're at a company that has a location here and locations elsewhere, uh, we would love to visit with that company about expanding more here. We, we think that our greatest growth, of course, will be from existing business. We have 100,000 businesses, we have 300,000 self-employed individuals. If they just add a job, if a fraction of them add a job, we lead the whole country. But we also think the next most likely growth is from businesses that, are, that have a, a, a presence here now and trying to grow uh, those businesses as well. So that's how, to me, that's how you can help us. 
Brett? Yep, I, I think uh, it's hard to add to that, except I uh, uh, might just say whenever you leave here today, you'll go back to uh, either your tea time or your office. <laughs> and uh, tea time, call Michael. me, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you're going back to the office, I want you to think about uh, who maybe some of your suppliers are, who are some of your customers um, that, uh, that maybe we could follow up on. Uh, come end of May, our governor wants to be on the road all the time. He's, he's already hitting us up. Uh, I, I give him some, some phone calls to make every week of potential companies to come here or potential companies to grow in the state. And, and uh, in fact, two weeks ago, uh, I'd normally try to send them to him over the weekend and Nick got Monday at noon and I hadn't sent him and, and uh, Michael Junk calls, where's, where's the governor's call list? And he, he wants to make those. He wants to be making those visits. And it, 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 uh, it's a challenge for us at Commerce to make sure we come up with, with really good leads that way. Um, so again, at okcommerce.gov, you can, you can send things to us. You can work through the, uh, um, uh, the success stories. Uh, and we're trying to create this culture of winning. If we can get more of those good news stories out there, think about it. People want to be part of something fun and exciting that's going on. And if all your competitors and everybody else is growing, well, maybe I ought to be investing another couple thousand dollars or hundred thousand dollars into my company. Maybe I ought to be hiring some other folks uh, to try to keep up with this growth that's happening. We want to tell those stories and uh, you guys could help us do that. Our top four uh, economic development people in the state are salespeople. That's what we do. The governor sold books and set a record for the Southwest company. Uh, that's, my, that's been my entire career uh, has, been, has been business development. Brent, that's what he's done for 10 years um, uh, in Eden. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Pinnell is a salesman deluxe. And so we are uh, very, very motivated uh, to sell the state. And the, as any of you, many of you are in sales, and you know the hardest thing to do is to, is to come up with that prospect. You don't mind making the call. We'll make the calls. But if you guys can give us some warm leads, we won't even say it came from you. You can just <laughs> give it to you. Just tell us who to call. Say, don't use my name. We won't. Uh, we'll just say we can come up with great alibis for how we got the name. I'm excellent <laughs> at that. So, you know, one thing we didn't that. mention, and we're not just filibustering to keep you guys from asking questions, but, but, <laughs> but we, have a, uh, we have an executive committee uh, for the Department of Commerce. I don't know that Commerce has ever had that before, too, that includes uh, the Secretary, myself, Lieutenant Governor Pinnell, um, Secretary Shrum, uh, Dr. Casey Shrum is the new Secretary of Science and Technology. <laughs> She's on there. And Dave Stewart, he's heading our workforce effort. We, uh, we have a phone call every Friday morning where we talk through all of the strategies that are happening. So, it's, so we speak with one voice. We're not uh, tripping over each other. Uh, that was the Secretary's idea, and I, it's worked out spectacularly uh, in these first three months. We, last thing, and then we'll open it up. But, but this would, I think this would be interesting to, to you all, and it just hit me. Um, in addition to uh, advisory board, we have three new uh, councils that we have named within Commerce that the governor will meet with every quarter, and they are Minority Business Council, uh, first one that we know of in the state, 20 minority business owners and leaders from all over the state of Oklahoma, uh, Tribal Leadership Council, uh, 10, uh, we're going to do 10 at a time and change it out uh, each year, but 10 tribal leaders who will meet with us quarterly to see how we can uh, work together and a nonprofit um, leadership council. The nonprofit organizations just have never really had an uh, entry point uh, into the state government. And so we have made that commerce. And so uh, we're trying to get a lot of smart people around the table to give us input. We'll do the work. Um, but we want to be very inclusive as well, so I just thought that might be of interest to the crew. Good. Well, we've concluded the softball section, and now we go to hardball. <laughs> <laughs> so it's y'all's turn. Anybody out there, we have a couple minutes. Uh, who has a burning question for either one? Clayton or and both? Clay, you don't have to leave. We're just getting to the good <laughs> part. Here. Right here. Oh, oh okay. yeah. I don't You're live and being recorded. I have a microphone, <laughs> sorry. Um, I guess. As you travel down the branding journey, I was just curious um, how you get that message not only to your out-of-state places where you're really trying to target to, but to your own constituents, because I am a West Coast transplant. And uh, today might have been the first day where someone said, oh, what brings you to the city versus what are you doing here? <laughs> so I was just curious how you really target that message to your own people, because 
There's a lot to do here. I mean, I lived in Vegas for 10 years and people just can't believe that I'm sitting at this table. Um, but there is a lot to do. Um, when I bring people into the city, I, the first thing I do is get them in the car, drive them around downtown and further east. Um, but there's a lot more here than people understand. It's not a horse and buggy town like you mentioned. Um, but how do you sell that to your own people so they can help you sell it? Um, well, let me give you anecdotal evidence that it can happen. Um, in Enid, uh, over these last 10 years, we did a rebranding in that community. And uh, it started, uh, we actually started with what we called the First Best Most Only campaign, which was a partnership with our newspaper. And we solicited for stories where Enid was the best at something, first at something, had the most of something. And, uh, and then the newspaper would run an article about it every, every week on the Sunday uh, front page article. And it got the community excited to tell all these stories. And we found out all these amazing things about the community. And, and uh, it was really that kind of information that we used to create the brand for Enid, which the, the brand for Enid, you never hear it anywhere, but it's, it's adventurous is the term. And we define that in several ways. You don't see it in any of our marketing slogans, but if you're a Vance pilot or if you're a wildcatter or if you're uh, you know, an entrepreneur or, or you're running the land run with a stake in your hand and you're trying to beat out all your neighbors and put it on the ground, shoot anybody who tries to take your property, that's adventurous, that's exciting, that's a story that you can tell from Enid. And then you, then you turn marketing messages into that and visuals and, and we had an enidbrand.com website with all these pictures and if you're gonna have pictures of adventurous, you don't have somebody sipping coffee in the corner of a coffee shop. You have them you know, playing volleyball or, or running on a trail or something like that. Um, so it, that's why you've gotta start with the promise first and then and grow out from there. But to your point, <clears throat> our vision was that we wanted marketing messages to share with people in Dallas and Houston and anybody else that might be coming here. And we realized we had forgotten our 50,000 ambassadors that were there in town and we had to turn that marketing message inward and start doing some, uh, some ad purchasing just within our own community and, and uh, within our own town, doing some spots on radio ads just to tell the story. Um, I think we can do that through our success stories plan that we have here, but again, we, we have to have that promise first. And your point is spot on. John, you have anything? To I don't have anything to add to that. Over here. Hi, thank you all so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Uh, I had a, two questions really related uh, to each other. The first is, uh, what are your plans for export development as a means of economic development for existing businesses? Uh, and what are your goals there? And then secondly, what plans or programs are in place or in development for that? You have that one. Yeah, because I, that's the meeting I just came from. <laughs> so we just spent uh, two hours uh, with uh, export uh, gurus all over the state talking about that very thing. Our exports uh, from Oklahoma were up 14% year over year last year, so we're excited about that. Um, uh, resources is going to be a is going to be a, a big one. Uh, targeting. We just met yesterday with uh, uh, the new dean of international studies at OSU, and we're talking about uh, some ways that we can partner with them. They want to use graduate students to help us with some of the efforts. We're uh, discussing an idea today about um, uh, ambassadors to go from Oklahoma throughout the world. Um, business people that are already involved in certain countries, leveraging their relationships and who they know and who we can talk to. So um, that, is a, that is a huge focus and probably uh, one of our biggest areas of potential uh, as a state, both, both the export piece as well as a foreign direct investment. Companies outside of the U.S. Uh, making an investment into our state has, has been remarkable to me. Anything? Oh, you did. Question over here. <clears throat> Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, it was great hearing you all talk about workforce development. That's been a topic of conversation around here for years. Um, I know with uh, discussions at Tinker, they say they can hire every engineer in the state and still not have enough to do what they need to do. Um, we have a great career tech uh, program in Oklahoma already, one of the best in the nation. Uh, we have the aeronautic uh, center that's coming up. Um, but what other ideas on the table, where do you see that going moving forward to help us take those next steps to attract businesses and having the right workforce to support them? 
I, uh, my son's graduating from OSU next year with an engineering degree, so I'm hoping every one of them gets hired because I don't want him in my basement. <laughs> so I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Um, we had an interesting deal <clears throat> that some of you in this room were involved with uh, a company from Europe that's looking to locate in Oklahoma. And they, uh, they were concerned about workforce in our state, and so we had a presentation for them. About, uh, about our workforce programs. And we had this great panel of folks that were up there, absolutely brilliant. And at the end of the presentation, uh, the guy said, okay, so who do I call to make sure I have resumes whenever I open my doors? And it's like, well, you can have her cell phone number and his cell phone number. And it, there was, there's, we don't really have one portal into workforce development in Oklahoma. And the governor recognized that way early. Uh, before even inauguration, he established a, a workforce development team uh, that Sean and I both work very closely with that includes folks like Joy Hoffmeister and Chancellor Johnson, <clears throat> or, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Dr. Marcy Mack at, at Career Tech. And they've been meeting every week since two weeks before the inauguration, trying to figure out what that, what that portal could look like. How, how could you, if you're, if you're trying to add 100 employees, you're trying to add 20 employees, or two barbers at Blue Jays Barbershop, uh, who do you call? And it's different in different parts of the state. In Enid, they probably called Autry Technology Center, but uh, you know, in Hugo, they might call somebody different, or in Shawnee, it might be somebody different. Um, having that one portal is important. And, and workforce development is, is simple in concept. You're really just trying to project what jobs you're gonna have in your economy over the next five or six years. And you make sure that this end of the pipeline, you've analyzed who's coming out of from PK through 12 and, and from career tech and higher ed, and, and you make sure those two pipes are the same size. Uh, what we've gotta figure out as a state is how do you put the joint together so you're not leaking kids out into Texas uh, in the process. So. It's a simple concept, but you gotta make sure everybody's on the same page. The nice thing is everybody has been playing well and, and uh, everybody's on this, the, the same page thus far. Uh, even whenever you're talking money and FTEs, uh, everybody wants to find a solution. It's been very exciting to me. You've probably got more insight than, than me. Yeah, uh, so this is, the, this is our toughest issue, uh, bar none. I feel very confident in the ability uh, our, in our ability to go sell companies and spread success stories and, and do a better job of communicating. Um, I absolutely think this is gonna be the toughest. Uh, so what I've always tried to do is kind of find who is best in class in each of these areas and let's learn from them. And so my second call after I had to beg uh, Brent extensively to take the executive director job, but well, I was successful, as you can see, uh, in making that happen. My second call was to uh, a gentleman named David Stewart, because at MidAmerica and Pryor, they have a very innovative workforce development partnership between the schools, the career tech, the private business, universities, RSUs involved with them. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's really world class, and so uh, we have convened this group that Brent mentioned that David has been leading, and they've come up with some initial uh, recommendations that are that are groundbreaking. I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, I can't really share those because we haven't uh, gotten full gov governor approval uh, on those. But it will be a game changer, and we will be known as number one. I feel like Oklahoma and Georgia are neck and neck in terms of workforce development. Uh, we will be known as number one, I, I promise you. If we don't do anything else during uh, my time here, we will be known as the best in the country. Outstanding. Uh, help me thank our panelists. Thank you, guys. We think economic development's in good hands. Uh, I want to again thank our signature sponsor, Cox Business, and corporate sponsor, ADG, for their participation in today's event. Uh, before we adjourn, and we're on time, I want to let you know about a new signature chamber event designed to uh, start some important conversations about our region's health outcomes. The State of Health Luncheon is scheduled for May the 13th, and it will feature all four executive leaders of our region's largest healthcare establishments as they discuss the healthcare innovations taking place here in Oklahoma City and how our community leaders and businesses can help, a healthier, can help us achieve a healthier community. So make sure you reserve your space today at okcchamber.com slash 
S-O-H, State of Health. Uh, we also hope you'll join us next month for our May Forum. Uh, it will feature Lieutenant Governor Pinnell giving an overview of how the state plans to strengthen its appeal as a visitor des destination. Register at okcchamber.com slash May Forum. Uh, and that's it for today. Thank all of you for being here. We are adjourned. <laughs>